It's like a symbiotic partnership in that tech companies, especially Apple, really excel in user experience, whereas banks typically struggle with that a bit more. In a groundbreaking move, Apple and Goldman Sachs are set to reshape the banking industry with their innovative collaboration. They've introduced a high-yield savings account offering an impressive 4.15% return, exclusively available to Apple Card holders. What's fascinating about this venture is the unique partnership that combines Apple's technological prowess with Goldman Sachs' financial expertise, heralding a new era of banking as a service. The heart of this collaboration centers around the interaction between two major entities, Goldman Sachs and Apple. What makes this partnership strong is the way these two big players work together. On one side, there's Goldman Sachs, known for its strong and reliable banking foundation. On the other side, there's Apple, bringing its stylish and smooth technological interface into the mix. The outcome of this teamwork is a relationship where both sides gain something positive. This kind of cooperation works like a two-way street. It's a bit like when two animals help each other out in nature. Both get something they need. In this case, Goldman Sachs benefits from Apple's sleek tech interface, which makes banking more user-friendly and appealing to customers. This is especially important because regular banks sometimes struggle with giving customers really good experiences. On the flip side, Apple gains from Goldman Sachs' solid banking background. This helps Apple's technology become even more useful, reliable, and secure when dealing with people's money. So, both Goldman Sachs and Apple are like puzzle pieces that fit really well together. They each bring something special to the table, and together they make things better for both themselves and the people who use their services. During a time when many banks are offering really small interest rates for the money people keep in savings accounts, Apple stands out by promising something quite impressive a yearly return of 4.15% for people who save their money. What's even better is that they don't ask for a specific minimum amount of money to start, and there's no period where you're not allowed to access your savings. On top of that, there's the safety net of FDIC insurance, which is like a guarantee that your money is protected. It's important to know that Apple isn't actually a bank itself, so it doesn't have a special license to be one. However, it works together with Goldman Sachs Bank USA, a well-known bank. More specifically, they operate under the name Marcus, which is a part of Goldman Sachs and has that FDIC insurance for people's savings. This kind of setup is like a big protective umbrella. Because of all this, Apple is considered something called a neobank. This is similar to some other fintech companies like Chime or Monzo. These are new-age banks that use technology to offer different and more attractive options for people's money. So, even though Apple isn't exactly a traditional bank, it's playing in a similar space with these new, innovative banking alternatives. What makes this partnership really special is how much it affects many people around the world. Just think about it. There are a huge 2 billion iPhones all over the planet. This means that Apple has a way to reach a lot of people. And this is important because it helps Goldman Sachs, the bank, to spread its savings account offer widely. It's like using a big highway to get their offer to many, many people. This kind of smart decision is like a game plan. Goldman Sachs is using Apple's popularity to make things easier for itself. By doing this, they can attract people's money into their bank more easily. This is a big advantage because the world of banking is full of competition. And especially when things are uncertain financially like they are sometimes. Having an easy way to get people's money to trust your bank is really important. It's like having a secret weapon that helps you stand out and stay strong in the middle of all the other banks. Taking a look at what Google tried to do in a similar area can give us a helpful perspective. Back in 2019, Google said it wanted to work together with Citibank to start something like a checking account service. This meant people could manage their everyday money through Google, but things didn't go as planned. The process of starting this service got complicated, and by 2021, they had to stop the whole project. It faced a lot of difficulties. Now, if we look at what Apple and Goldman Sachs are doing, it seems like they've learned from Google's experience. They've paid attention to the lessons that Google's journey taught. As a result, they're creating a partnership that works more smoothly and is turning out to be successful. It's like learning from someone else's mistakes. Apple and Goldman Sachs saw what didn't work well for Google and made sure they didn't run into the same problems. This careful thinking and planning are helping them to create a partnership that's working better and achieving its goals. 
In essence, the collaboration between Apple and Goldman Sachs is poised to revolutionize the banking sector. By merging cutting-edge technology with financial expertise, they've created a platform that addresses the shortcomings of traditional banks and delivers unparalleled convenience and benefits to consumers. This partnership not only secures Apple's position as a tech giant, but also propels Goldman Sachs into the forefront of modern banking innovation. It's quite fascinating to think about why Google might have been unsure about getting into a similar partnership. People have different ideas about this, and one of the main thoughts is that many important customers of Google are actually banks. These banks use Google's services, like storing data on the internet, which is called cloud services. This might be why Google was hesitant to join a field that could compete with their own customers. On the other hand, Apple is in a different situation. Their main thing is selling iPhones, those really popular phones that many people use. Because of this, Apple wants to make their phones even more valuable and helpful in any way they can. So when they decided to step into financial services, it fit well with their goal of making their devices even better. So you can see that Google and Apple had different things to think about when it came to working with banks. Google had to be careful not to upset their bank customers, while Apple saw a chance to make their iPhones even more useful by teaming up with a bank like Goldman Sachs. The rise of online banks has dramatically reshaped the banking landscape. These digital banks have stepped up to the plate by offering higher yield alternatives, attracting substantial deposits. Their advantage lies in their lack of physical branch networks and reduced need for expensive support staff. As a result, they can provide significantly higher interest rates. Apple and Goldman Sachs seem poised to challenge these online banks directly, rather than the more traditional brick-and-mortar institutions. Interestingly, this isn't the first time a major non-banking corporation has attempted to enter the realm of consumer finance. Going back to the 1970s, Sears Roebuck owned a multitude of savings and loan branches in California. By the 1980s, Sears expanded its reach by acquiring retail broker Dean Witter Reynolds. However, as the retail landscape transformed with the rise of behemoths like Walmart and Target, Sears' core retail business faced substantial challenges. One intriguing theory that emerges from this partnership is that banks might increasingly become the behind-the-scenes infrastructure powering flashy tech offerings. Their branding could evolve to play a more pivotal role in attracting tech companies as partners rather than solely focusing on direct consumer marketing. This shift underscores the evolving nature of the industry dynamics. Considering the dynamics of this partnership, it's reasonable to assume that Goldman Sachs secured its role as the partner due to its competitive pricing. Their strong interest in bolstering their consumer lending and deposit business likely played a significant role in their eagerness to win this partnership. This underscores the pivotal role that cost considerations can play in shaping industry-changing collaborations like this one. Looking ahead, the financial implications of this collaboration warrant close scrutiny. Over the next 5 to 10 years, the fintech market is poised for consolidation. This could lead to the emergence of a select few banking-as-a-service providers who establish themselves as clear frontrunners in the industry. This trend is likely to reshape the landscape and drive strategic shifts among various players. Regulation often looms large in this rapidly evolving landscape. The Office of the Comptroller of the Currency is taking an active role in overseeing these partnerships, ensuring rigorous monitoring of their operations. Regulatory authorities are keen on ensuring these alliances adhere strictly to established regulations and that the banks involved are diligent in holding tech companies accountable to the established rules. While the collaboration between Apple and Goldman Sachs is groundbreaking, it's only the tip of the iceberg in terms of the transformations the financial industry is set to undergo. The interplay of financial factors, regulatory oversight, and market consolidation will collectively shape the future of banking and technology, leaving a lasting impact on the way we manage and interact with our finances. The dynamic partnership between Apple and Goldman Sachs marks a pivotal moment in the evolution of the banking industry. Their fusion of cutting-edge technology and financial expertise demonstrates the potential for innovative collaborations to reshape traditional norms. As the financial landscape undergoes seismic shifts, it's imperative to watch closely how consolidation, regulatory measures, and emerging trends will steer the course of fintech. The journey has only just begun, and as we navigate these changes, one thing is certain. 
The intersection of technology and finance will continue to redefine how we manage, save, and invest our hard-earned money. Share your thoughts in the comment section below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.